Good evening and welcome to the One Finance Masterclass. These masterclasses are designed to help you take informed decision towards your personal finances. Guided by our qualified advisors, these experiences should be taken to optimize your money strategies from money management strategies. At One Finance, we are focused on holistic perspective towards your financial planning. And today, again, we are coming back with this masterclass where we will focus on one more aspect of your financial planning, and that is called investments. Investments is always looked at the most important part of the financial planning. But do not forget, it's not the only part. Today, we have again with us a qualified financial advisor who will take you through this extensive topic called as asset allocation and diversification where he's going to focus on how you should balance your risk and reward in order to keep yourself or your portfolio well balanced and also taken care by the individual's risk tolerance, your goals and overall financial picture. Let's join today's qualified financial advisor, CA Nitesh Buddhadev. Thank you so much, Nitesh, for joining us today in our masterclass. Uh, Nitesh has been with us for a really long time now. He's a member of uh, our advisory committee uh, and um, at the Mumbai chapter at One Finance, and he's also a founder of Nibit Consultancy. Uh, he has around 10 years of experience now as a, uh, in the financial markets. Yes, he looks a little young for the 10 years <laughs> part, but definitely, yes. Uh, he has around 10 years of experience in the financial markets. And most importantly, he's been handling some uh, 200 plus families uh, consultancy, tax consultancy and investment consultancy over India, US, Australia, Dubai. I, I think more uh, names <laughs> I need to add into that. But definitely he's been a part of One Finance family for a really long time and helping us to build One Finance. So let's take uh, give it the floor to him. Uh, before you get started, a small uh, point that any questions you have towards this particular topic, you can put it in the comment section and we'll be taking all the questions in the last 15 minutes. And if we miss any questions, Nitesh Buddha Dev sir himself is going to answer all these questions by himself on LinkedIn chat later after the show. So Nitesh, floor is yours. All the best. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sonam. Thanks, Thanks for sir. having me. Thanks to you and the team <laughs> One Finance for Absolutely. this masterclass and inviting me over. And thanks for that compliment. Thanks so much again, sir. Enjoy, sir. Hello, everyone. Once again, very good evening. What we're going to discuss today is asset allocation and diversification. Everything you should be knowing about this two topic, which is very crucial for your investing journey. We all must have heard about the phrase, there is no free lunch, right? But there is one exception to that. Diversification is the only free lunch. Why I'm saying this, why we say this, and a lot more beyond that, what should be the asset allocation strategies, how you should be uh, balancing between the risk and reward, few of the strategies we're going to see. And of course, we're going to touch upon few of the biases and how you can come over that. So stay tuned. As Sonam said, please, your question flowing. We'll try and answer all the questions you have. So say, stay tuned. Let's get started with the asset allocation. So what is asset allocation? Asset allocation is an investing strategy where we try to balance risk and reward by allocating a percentage of your portfolio to various asset classes. Instead of just allocating all the things to one asset class, we put in a different asset, uh, different assets. And this will be based on your age, your risk profile, your investment horizons. If I want to simply put, let's say you have a portfolio of a 10 lakh rupees and you want to invest this money. Instead of investing everything in a particular or a one asset class, what you will do, you will, let's say, invest in a certain percentage in equity, debt, gold, and others. That's simple asset allocation for you. But now, how we do that? This will be based on what is your risk profile, what is your investments horizon, how your existing portfolio is structured. Also, all these factors we need to consider when we are thinking about the asset allocation. Okay, but why we need to do that, right? You must be wondering why we are doing. Do we need all this asset class or more than one asset class? Can't we just stick to one asset class? It might be a fixed deposit or a debt or equity. Okay, the whole purpose of asset allocation and why we should be doing asset allocation is because 
you want to reduce the risk. In this process of reducing the risk, you want to optimize or you want to balance between the risk and return. Now, by balancing between the risk and return in this asset allocation, what we're trying to achieve is superior risk adjusted return. I know this, uh, this must be uh, sounding like so many jargons. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to simplify each and everything what I just spoke about the risk return, balancing that and how it's going to work for you. Okay. But Nitish, you are telling that you must be wondering, Nitish, you are telling that this is asset allocation and we need to do that. And it's the whole topic uh, on this, right? Whole masterclass is on that. Is there any data which suggests that how much important it is? Let's go to next slide and see that how important it is. My dear friends, whenever I meet new investors or for that matter, existing investments during various program, IRP or during my news interviews, what I observe that people are mostly discussing about or mostly asking questions or 90, 90%, around 90% of the questions revolve around which stock to invest, which mutual fund to invest, uh, when I should be entering, is this too expensive market where I should be exiting out of this portfolio or this stocks or this mutual fund. So this all, as you understand, is related to market timing and selecting a security stock or a mutual fund, right? This is about the product and getting the market timing right. But if I talk about the your portfolio return, which is the primary driver of asset, the primary driver of your risk and reward of your portfolio or which contributes highest percentage. And this is the study, as you can see on the screen, the highest driver of your return is 90 percent. OK, 90 percent of the risk and reward depends upon the asset allocation and only 10 percent, only 10 percent depends upon the securities, security you select or a market timing. Yes, my dear friends, it's that important. Vanguard and various other research shows that this is the very important part of your portfolio's risk and return and the variation of your return and risk in your portfolio. So don't ignore this asset allocation strategy. And again, I'll emphasize on the data, 90% is about asset allocation and only 10% about the stock securities or a market timing. If I talk about the Indian study of Chrysil also, it also revolves around this kind of data only. Chrysil has done study between 2003 to 2017 based on various data points available. What they have observed, the research shows that around 10.5% return if you just invested in the equity alone. But if you have a diversified portfolio of equity, debt and gold, the return was around 12.5%. Only equity portfolio 10.5. If it's a diversified portfolio, the return is around 12.5. So all over the world, asset allocation proves that it's a superior strategy instead of just focusing on the one asset class only. We have seen about the asset allocation. Let's talk in the next slide about the diversification. Okay. Now, what I have observed that many at times, not only the investors, but some of the uh, advisors or some of the uh, finance savvy guy also get confused between this two term of asset allocation and the diversification. But it's quite simple. And this is not one in the same. Sometimes used interchangeably, that's okay. But that's not one in the same. So let me simplify this for you. Okay, what is asset allocation again? And what is the diversification we're going to talk about? Asset allocation is about you spreading your investment between the asset class or across the asset class. But when it comes to diversification, what you are doing, you are spreading investments within the asset class. I hope it's clear that how the diversification works. Let me give you a simple example, which will, I think, clear the whole perspective about the set allocation and diversification is that let's say you want to invest uh, some amount to uh, equity debt, or for that matter, any other asset class. So when you invest, let's say your 10 lakh rupees to equity debt and gold, that's the asset allocation. But you understand that in equity also, you will not be just investing in one or two stocks or just one mutual fund, right? So now in equity portion, out of that equity, debt and gold, whatever you put in the equity portion, in that equity also, you will be diversifying it between the large, small, mid cap, or even the foreign equity, right? That's the geographical, the geographical diversification and also the diversification in the 
a set uh, which is equity, which we are talking about, right? So that's how the diversification works. Okay, but why we need to do the diversification asset allocation, though we understand that it's crucial, we have shown that reason also. The whole purpose of this, both the things, diversification and asset allocation is to balance between risk and reward. That we'll see in the next slide that how we can achieve that ideal risk and return balance and why we need to minimize the risk and why we say it's a free lunch. That's all about we're going to talk in this particular uh, slide between when we are trying to manage the risk and reward, what, why we are talking about risk and reward. Okay. First, first of all, so whenever we mainly talk about any product or any asset class, what we hear is that like, of course we have moved from, uh, when we talk about any automobiles, right? Hum normally pehle the, ke yaar, ye average kitna deti hai, right? But now we go beyond that, right? What's the safety rating? airbags hacking and now that's compulsory by the way right you see the more features and all that thing about i think the same way we need to move ahead or we need to step up our game in investing also when we are selecting a product so we need to think about the second side of the coin yes i always believe that risk and return are two sides of the same coin we just talk about the only side and which is return so this is the time we speak about both return and risk and we try to balance between these two and we talking about the return. And of course, we first talk about return, uh, not an issue. Let's first talk about the return, okay? And when we see the return of various asset classes, which we just discussed, we'll move, we'll move to next slide. And we'll see that how return has been given by this asset class in the period one year, three year, five year, 10 year, 15 year, and 20 year for the Indian equity, US equity, coal, debt, and real estate. So I'm not just showing you return of last two, three or five years, and I'm not being biased with the data. So that's why I'm showing that what is the performance of each asset class during the short term, medium term and long term. Okay. And that also various asset classes and inequity also US and India. So when we see the return, you will think that Nitesh, there is no brainer. Okay. When I'm seeing the data, you'll see that in five years, 10 years, 15 years or 20 years for that matter, the best asset class we can see is equity right then shouldn't be putting everything in the equity only because my horizon is 15 years here i want you to pause and reflect what we are talking about the return and this is the average return right this is not talking about the intermediate volatility this is not talking about or this data is not showing when we look at the average okay let me give you an example let's assume you want to cross a river from one point to another point okay and your height is five feet and the depth of the river is average four feet your height is five feet your average depth of this river which you want to cross is four feet okay and let's assume for the timing you don't know swimming can you cross this you all need to answer maybe you can just put on in the comment right i'll again repeat the question why i'm talking about the average return and what I'm trying to emphasize here is that we are just talking about return when it, we are seeing this data point and we think that there is no brainer to put everything in the equity because my horizon is a long term, right? This example or this question is for you. You want to cross a river from A point to B point. You don't know swimming. Your height is five feet and the average depth of this river is four feet. Can you cross this? I know you might be wondering, yes, no, maybe. So this is not a trick question, but let me tell you, you can't cross this. Even if your height is six feet, seven feet, you can't cross this. Now you're wondering why we can't cross. You have seen the typical how the river is, right? When I say average depth of river is four feet, you must have understood that at some point of time, at some level of the river, it might be just two, two feet depth, four feet, eight feet, or 10 feet also. And when I say the average depth is four feet, and that's what I mean. So you don't know the, how the journey look like when I'm investing 100% in the equity as asset class or for that matter, debt as asset class, okay? And I just want to reiterate on the risk part also. And when I talk about the risk part, what we are not emphasizing on and what understand, what we understand commonly risk is you losing your capital. You invest one lakh rupees and you might get just 90,000, 80,000 and there is a less of value you receive and that's the one of the risk you consider. But what about the risk of not beating the inflation? What about the risk of liquidity? Your whole of the money is, let's say, invested in the real estate. 
and now there is a liquidity risk. You understand that that's, it is not that liquid as financial instrument. And what about in the equity you have you are holding majority of the chunk in the ESOP? You know that it's illiquid. So that's the risk of liquidity. Or in the debt also, let's say your majority of the money is invested in the PPF. Okay. So you know that it's locked in for the 15 years from the day you open the account. That's the risk of liquidity. So don't just think that the only risk is there when it comes to investing is losing your capital. There is a risk of uh, not getting money. Of course, that's there. But you also need to understand the other risk, which is liquidity risk, not beating the inflation, reinvestment risk, and many other. So how we balance that, how we come over that, and that's how we can do is through asset allocation. And when we talk about risk and return, let's focus now a bit on the risk part. And when we see the particular, uh, particular drawdown in a particular uh, asset class is first, let's focus a risk in a totality. In this slide, you can see that when let's let me again give you example and why I say and why the title of this slide is that losing less is equally important. Like right? we don't we I think we all don't like to lose anything except a few fats and few cages and few niches, right? So when it comes to losing less and why I'm talking about the risk in this balance is let's assume that and I'm going to talk about the drop down and that into percentage term. What happens in finances when it comes to money and all that thing? We talk about the absolute return, absolute money and absolute terms, right? Think everything in the percentage term, friends. When you put everything in the percentage terms, many things get crystal clear to you. So let's think you have a portfolio of 10 lakh rupees. Now, portfolio of 10 lakh rupees, let's assume that it's decreased. You have invested all in the equity for the time being. And that also maybe let's assume that in the small cap, okay, for example. Now that 10 lakh becomes 9 lakh due to market call errors or any other thing. Okay. Now that 10 to 9 is a 1 lakh rupees loss. Okay. Or a national loss because there's a drop in the value in that particular stocks or mutual fund or the securities. Okay. Now that is a 10% loss, right? 10 lakh becoming 9 lakh is a 10% loss. Now let's assume that that 9 lakh rupees is the worth of your portfolio. Now again, just to go back to the capital, which is of 10 lakh rupees. How much return you need to earn, my friend? It's not 10%, right? From 9 lakh to 10 lakh, it's an 11% return you need to earn. So 1 lakh looks same, and that's why it gets biased that we just need to get that 1 lakh back to get to our capital. But in percentage terms, that portfolio should be able to perform 11% just to get back to the capital. Let's extend it further, and let's see that if portfolio falls to 20%, okay? For example, that becomes 10 lakh to 8 lakh. That's the 20% loss, right? You are losing 2 lakh of the portfolio. But now again, go back to just to go back to your capital, just to get back your capital, you need to earn 25% return. A simple math, right? Or maybe 6th standard or 5th standard math. But yeah, that's what we keep forgetting. And that's why this is a gentle reminder for that. And last, if your portfolio from 10 lakh to become 5 lakh, that's just a 50% loss, okay? And is this impractical example? No. During 2008, during 2020, you would have seen this kind of a drop in the portfolio. Forget about the portfolio. You have seen this kind of a drop in the index itself. So your 10 lakh becoming 5 lakh is a 50% loss. But just get, get back to capital. You need to earn 100% profit. Yes. that's And that's why I'm saying put everything in that perspective. Put everything in that percentage term. And then you'll realize now. And that's why I'm saying losing less is equally important. So in that average concept, don't forget that river example. And when it comes to losing less, don't forget that 50% example. And that will, I think that will give you that figure that you need to reduce the volatility. You need to think about risk and return. And that's why diversification in a set allocation. When and why we are discussing the statistical term, okay, which is correlation. Correlation is a statistical term describing the degree to which two variables move in the coordination with one another, right? I think it's very simple. We all learn this in our stats. But why I'm mentioning about this statistical term or this correlation thing here? Because in a set allocation, when we want to reduce the risk, reduce the volatility, typically we need to think about the correlation. So before that, let's understand what is positive and negative correlation. Uh, forget about this term mentioned on the screen. Let me give you a practical example. Let's say. In the last two years, you haven't gone out with your spouse. And now some of your friend comes and say that, 
let's go on bachelor i'm getting married in two months now you know that your heart says you want to go but your brain says ke ghar bhi to wapas jana hai right that's the classic example of negative correlation why your heart is saying yes 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 your mind is saying no 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 so both of these variables moving in the opposite direction let's come back to this <laughs> master class and let's assume that you have the same kind of a allocation in the portfolio so if there is a drop in a particular asset class if they don't have a negative uh, correlation and let's say positive correlation and what's that positive correlation those two variables are said to have a positive co correlation when they move in the same direction and vice versa when they move in the opposite direction that's the negative correlation what we are trying to do in a set allocation is that we are trying to get into those asset classes which have a negative correlation or at least they don't have a positive correlation for example let's talk about gold and equity many a times or most of the times we have seen that when there is a geopolitical crisis then there is a depression recession and all this kind of a scenario kind of a war and all that thing you would see that equity will not do good but at that time one asset class one asset class which will sign is gold and that's why this is called as a negative correlation we'll see this in the data also let's move to the next slide so let's what we are discuss let's see in the impact form next slide please when we are talking about the asset allocation okay let's see which are the strategies and how we can achieve this asset allocation okay there are many strategies to have the asset allocation in place but the main two are strategic asset allocation and dynamic asset allocation what is strategic asset allocation it's very simple you uh, assign a percentage let's say you want to invest 10 lakh rupees based on your it can be based on your risk profile or based can be based on your age or it can be combination of this two okay let's say you are a 35 year old your risk profile is aggressive and you have a long time horizon and you are allocating 70% in equity and 30% in debt this is a classic case of a strategic strategic asset allocation in this let's say you have invested 10 lakh rupees okay so this 10 lakh is divided into 70 and 30 7 lakh and 3 lakh now you rebalance the portfolio periodically okay let's say a year so let's say after a one year your 7 lakh has grown to 8 lakh okay and that 3, 3 lakh has grown to 20000 so total gain of 1 lakh 20000 now for you the new portfolio value would be 11 lakh 20000 not the 10 lakh so of this 11 lakh 20000 what you will do you will try to do that 70 30 same and you keep doing that periodically okay that's the strategic asset allocation so what is dynamic asset allocation dynamic asset allocation in that you try and rebalance it more frequently but this time it's not based on just your age and investment horizon and all this time it will depend upon the market or the particular asset class valuation when i say market or asset valuation don't misunderstood is with the price so it has nothing to do with since it's becoming 60000 or 65000 what we need to see what is the uh, value and what is the overall valuation of that particular asset class okay so in this strategy you move between the various asset classes be it debt to equity equity to debt or debt to gold and all that based on the valuation of those asset classes so let's say this strategy you have designed based on the few of the parameters like price to book price to equity dividend yield and all that thing and you keep shuffling between the portfolio as and when you think that the valuation is expensive and that's how the uh, dynamic and uh, strategic asset allocation works let's move to the next slide i i been to that zone or that part where people uh, there are people who of course must have satisfied with why we should be doing that but as i promised everything would be data and logic driven and we are not just claiming that you need to do that okay so let me satisfy to your left brain also and also let's say in other other terms if i say and if i always believe that in god we trust for all other things show me the data so here is the data for you if i just had a 5 minutes and sonam just said it is aapko 5 minute mein mujhe asset allocation aur diversification samjhana hai this is the slide my friend so if you have lost control sip of water have a tea and please focus on this slide this is really important mint publish this chart every year what this first let's understand it looks quite busy slide but stay with me i'll just decode this in next 2 minutes what this chart says winners keep rotating and why we say that okay and what's happening actually let's see that 
what is this table shows this includes the indian equity foreign equity debt gold and also in equity now let's talk about the diversification the large cap mid cap and small cap in the state index data okay what we are seeing if i enter the real data of last 10 years from 14 to 23 when we see the data of 14 to 23 of every financial year what we have observed every time there is a new winner and trust me we are not god and we don't know which is going to be the next best asset class okay whatever we have discussed we going to show here and prove that why it work in actuality or in the practice okay so you will see that if we talk about the 14 uh, financial year 14 you see that the snp 500 which is giving 31.7% return and you see the what is the worst performing asset class gold minus 7.9% okay in between you can see that indian equity small cap nifty mid cap treasury bills and government securities so we are talking about the short term debt as well as the long term that also we are also talking about in the equity various uh, market cap mid cap small cap and large cap so again i'm saying this is asset allocation plus diversification in one slide if you see 14 15 16 17 and all this year there is every time if we see the first three or for that matter first five you will always see that there is a different entry in that at least not in 4 5 years you will never see that the same asset class is winning so if just fast forward to 14 15 16 17 18 and let's go to 20 you will see that the gold is performing the best 37.2% in the same year you can see that small cap is minus 40% let me remind you that's the year of covid you can see that uncertainties crisis and you will see gold shining which i told you right that's the proof i also told you about the negative correlation right this is about the negative correlation you see that gold is performing well in most of the period equity would have done very bad so again talk about the financial year 23 uh, 13.6% of gold and your small cap mid cap are kind of minus and nifty is kind of a flatish so this is how the asset allocation work and that's why you might not get the best okay you might be argue that nitesh but in most of the years it looks like that equity is doing well and when i again talk about the average return i have shown that in last 10 years equity has done this percentage but this is how that journey and the example of river you can relate to now how the journey look like okay if you see that nifty return 19.5 28.5 then minus 7.5 then 2011 and so and so for minus 25% and plus 25% 30% so this is how the journey going to be you want the smoother journey you want to reduce the risk and you want the good risk adjusted return the only free lunch is the diversification and asset allocation let me extend this data further okay when i actually practice that strategic asset allocation again the busy slide but let me tell you why i'm again proving that point how the in actual and the practice this asset allocation going to work let's take an example that aggressive investor conservative investor <clears throat> and in between both of that okay so 70% i allocate to equity and 30% to debt 50 50 debt and equity equity 30 and debt 70 now i'm going to compare this portfolio in 1 3 5 7 10 15 20, 20 years with the if i only have that particular asset class portfolio so what i'm going to do this portfolio you compare this 18% in 70 30 you compare with the only indian equity 23% okay let's fast forward let's see the 10 years ka data this portfolio of 70 30 which is asset allocation between just two this asset classes 12% return and your gold is 8% so that's losing debt losing of course us equity looks good in indian equity looks good but of course 12% is not a bad return by reducing volatility to a great extent and if you want to see that that's how the drawdown works you see that that portfolio has a drawdown minus 40 any point of time this portfolio has not lo lost more than 40% in any year the minimum return is minus 35 and maximum maximum is 74% if i talk about the only equity portfolio which has a minus 55% return and plus 110% return i buy that point that i might not have the best return in my portfolio but i would never end up with the least and again i'm reference emphasizing when we look at the past data it's quite comfortable to focus only on that average number but don't forget the journey is going to be difficult and that's why you need to smoothen it out you need to reduce the volatility and risk extending further 
and maybe talking about how the rolling return works. I was talking about just point to point return. Let me just add one more thing. And I'm in this slide, I'm going to show that actually it's not just reduction of risk. You get the higher return, better return. And why I say this, let me prove this with the data. If you see the same 70, 30 portfolio, and if you compare this with only Indian equity, your average return is 14%. In Indian equity, the average return of any seven years period, what I'm talking about is a rolling return of a seven years, which means 99 se leke abhi tak, aap koi bhi seven, star, seven years tak invested raho, either in Nifty or in this combination portfolio of debt and equity, any seven years. I'm not saying past seven years or starting or any particular period. And that's why the rolling return. In this any period of seven years, what is the negative return or what is the chances and how many percentage times the portfolio was in a negative or in a positive, then what is the difference? That's what I'm trying to build here. So 14% average return and 15% average return. So just a difference of one percentage with the 30%, at least 30% less volatility, you can say, because we are invested in that 30% in a debt. Now let's focus how many times the portfolio of 70, 30 has delivered more than double digit return, which is more than 10%, 85% of the time. But what about the only equity portfolio, only 81% of the time. Now you can see that by reducing the volatility, I'm outperforming the only equity portfolio and I will be in the more than 10% case, 85% of the times. And if we want to see the maximum, which is more than 51%, uh, more than 15%, 31% times of this portfolio of asset allocation was 31% time, more than 15% and only all equity 35%, not a bad deal. Now you compare with US dead gold, it's always outperforming. This combination is always outperforming in seven years rolling period. I'm not claiming that you need to do like this, but I'm just emphasizing how it can create wonders. Okay, whenever we talk about investing, and this is my favorite topic, behavioral finance, right? It's believed that many research shows that investing is 80% about the behavioral finance or psychology and only 20% about the math. So whatever you are discussing on the investing, never forget the risk and return thing and never forget that there is a behavioral biases which impacts your saving, spending and investing decisions. And why I say that, if, if I have to show a classic two uh, behavioral biases, are hard mentality and overconfidence bias. Okay, how that affects? Let's talk about the recent event, which we all proud of. You, we have seen that we have created history yesterday, being on the moon, right? You must have celebrated that. We also celebrated here. But another thing happened at the same time in the market. And what is that? You know that? Any guess? You might have seen the news, or you might have seen the market news, because everything that happens affects market indirectly or directly. Yes, we created a history. We should be talking about that. But let me, in that sense, talk about the market when I'm talking about the biases, okay? The total budget of Chandrayaan-3 was 615 crore. Do you know the few of the companies which provided raw materials, some of the technology to this was increased by 50,000 crore? Yes, my dear friends, 615 crore is the budget of a Chandrayaan-3 and market cap increased in a day of few handful companies which has provided some technology raw materials and some or other way contributed to this in whatever portion is up by 50,000 crore am i judging those companies am i saying that's a bad no i'm just saying that's how the herd behaves that's how the recency bias works every you can corner every person in india talking about chandra and three i don't want to left out if i'm in the market by not investing in that companies and those companies and that's how a small kind of a bubble or any kind of a, uh, I would say, accident happens. So you need to observe this data, how those companies does, but that's not the point. What I'm trying to show is whenever I try to mimic the group, that's the hurt. Okay. And we should be saving ourselves from that. What is overconfidence? As the name suggests, we always overestimate our ability to predict, judge, and we believe that we know more than we actually know. That's the overconfidence in nutshell. These are just a few of the biases, but why you need to be aware about that and how it's related to investing or asset allocation. When you have a asset allocation strategies in place, you at least not getting trapped in this bias. Why? Let's say you have to rebalance based on the period you have set that 70, 30, that example, right? Or based on the valuation of the market, 
you will buy cheap and sell at the expensive valuation so that is some strategy in place which is going beyond your psychology right and that's why i'm saying that asset allocation is a place a very big role in coming over from this or just getting over from your behavioral biases also last but not the least there is no one size fits all it's a personal finance my dear friends always personalize it when it come to one finance we take data from you that data get processed okay and based on that data few of the proprietary model which build with the finest research work on that and that data shows and that what we get out of that data is your money sign your financial behavior score your generation profile your life stage and it's customized it's hyper personalized that what asset allocation strategies you should be having so i would not rely on the thumb rule or any strategy which thrown on the internet it should be hyper personalized and you should be accordingly diversifying and you do creating your portfolio in that manner because it's not that simple you need to study many things and as i told you the behavioral biases and they never shy away from taking professional help if it's required we come to the end and i know uh, i want to, if if given a chance i can speak for another 2 hours also on the same topic but i think the message is very loud and clear why we need that okay asset allocation is an investment strategy that aims to balance risk and reward always remember that diversification is a free lunch don't don't ignore this free lunch never put all eggs in one basket when it comes to investing strategies that depends upon your risk profile your age how much money you are investing what's your time horizon and many other factors allocate accordingly understand this biases okay i always believe that when it comes to biases or a behavioral finance always remember that you need two kinds of savings to be successful in investing the first one is saving money to invest and saving yourself from your emotional biases your behavior biases so if you are sorted with this two no one can stop you from creating the great wealth and lastly there is no simple formula don't shy away from taking expert help and always believe in these things and that's what we have covered with the data and logic why it's important thank you so much i'm happy to take your questions thank you so much natesh it was definitely a valuable session i could learn a lot of things from thank this session me. janet i have been a part of the industry for quite some time but this was a little different and thank you for taking us thank to some uh, case studies also that worked for us okay uh, yes okay uh, we have got some questions and we're going to take them before we let natesh go i know you've spoken a lot but let's just take those questions for them please all right so we have a first question from priya uh the question is how many stocks or mutual fund schemes we should have for diversification in a portfolio wow so no that's a great question uh i, I of course i have not uh, covered this but why it is important sonam what she is asking is very valid because what happens there is a difference between the diversification and diversification <laughs> <laughs> that's so true people tend to allocate to so many stocks or so many mutual funds because they don't know how this diversification or asset allocation works of course there is no one size fits all but with that disclaimer i can say that if it's in the mutual fund and you're diversifying it should be in the range of 6 to 8 schemes maximum okay. because typically a diversified mutual fund schemes invest in 40 to 50 stocks so i think that 6 to 8 schemes and of course you uh, include the gold mutual fund the foreign equity not more than 10 if i if i include all the asset classes gold equity debt and foreign equity that's on the mutual fund side okay. if we talk about the stocks again not an expert in the stocks but what i have generally seen that a 15 to 20 stocks portfolio in that equity part of your allocation is quite sorted one of course that comes again with the disclaimer you should be knowing what you are doing and that's that's, that's what <laughs> absolutely do. do not forget hyper personalization is very important when you doing any diversification uh, management uh, planning because uh, obviously it will be on your individual's risk tolerance level, level also and most importantly your financial goals how to go about diversifying the same all right the second question is by mr dev he says give me some practical example of strategic asset allocation or dynamic asset allocation <laughs> interesting dev thanks so i know you must be watching this and uh, you must have watched in entirety though i have covered but again i don't mind covering it uh, uh, one more example for you 
So let me take a practical scenario, which we do with our clients. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say any, anytime you want to invest, let's again take a simple example of 10 lakh rupees. Now, based on the risk profile, as we discussed, risk profile, uh, his or her investment tenure, sure. that how long he or she wants to stay invested. Okay. And based on this, we come out that you need to put 60% uh, in equity, 20% in debt, 10% in uh, uh, gold and 10% in the foreign equity for that matter. That's your kind of strategic asset allocation. We are fixing the percentage based on your risk profile and other parameters as we spoke. That's about that. And how we combine the dynamic along with this. Okay. Let's say in 2020, this is again the real uh, case study. In 2020, we, we went to a client and we said, hey, this is a mouth-watering valuation okay. because we have our parameter to know that how equity is valued currently or for that matter, debt or gold, how that looks like in the near future or in the long term. So we said that you can invest more money on the equity, okay? okay. Uh, because equity was down, gold was shining, that was okay, okay. And again, foreign equity war has collapsed, okay? We, we all know the reason. So of course, at that point of time, even people were not sure that I can commit more amount or not. So what we have done, we have taken out from the gold and invested more into the equity. We have okay. taken out from the debt and invested more in the equity. Okay. So that's what I'm combining the strategic asset allocation with the dynamic asset allocation. Sure. So this can also be done. So asset allocation works in this fashion also. And that's why you need to have a cash or this kind of a stable asset in your portfolio. So you can make up for when you need to uh, put more in the equity or for that matter any asset. Absolutely. But it was so interesting when you were giving this answer, Desh, that uh, you spoke more than the two investment options that are always talked about. Right. Stocks, mutual funds, say, aage badho. Right. debt markets, gold, there's so many more things to talk about. Uh, so our next question is the same. Are there any particular asset classes where we don't talk about it on a regular basis mm -hmm. but are there and has been missed normally in asset mm -hmm. allocations mm -hmm. so would you like to name some of them please right so when we talk about asset allocation for that matter it's always equity debt gold of course real estate yeah. and when we say others it's uh, everything you it can be your art your crypto and anything can be placed in that okay. but mostly uh, mujhe lagta hai, asset class bhi hai. Aapka sizable portfolio, Absolutely. this will take care of most of the things. Okay. But of course, how you diversify that, that also speaks about that. So you need that uh, geographical diversification and that's why we, or for that matter, even the US invest in the emerging market like Absolutely. India. And that's about that diversification. So this should become in the combination, asset allocation and the diversification. Super. So I'm liking this question by Mr. Dipain. He's saying robo-advisors are influencing now this asset allocation strategy. Does this really work? Uh, <laughs> Yes and no, <laughs> because as I told you, as I told you how that works, because there may be certain parameters and all that thing. Okay. But ultimately investing is art as well as science. So they might take care of the science aspect, but you can't take away the art thing. And Absolutely. that's why you need to have that hyper personalized approach. Absolutely. And that's how you should be allocating to that. Again, it might work in a certain conditions and certain things, but you also need to remember that there are behavior biases. Your robo advisor might throw that this is the asset allocation in this particular thing. But do you have the conviction to follow that or no? That's the question. <laughs> so true. Okay. Uh, so we have a question from Mr. Uh, Sanjay. He says, can you suggest any platform which can help in setting the asset allocation based on age and risk management? This is so important, right? Every life stage will have a different, complete uh way of asset allocation. I mean, a 60 year old person cannot be taking equities in its portfolio on a very high scale. Sure. So very good question. Would you like to please answer this? Sure. Uh, as you said that based on the few of the parameters, of course, uh, I might be biased, but you can of course definitely download the one finance and try it out. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, you can also see other apps and compare no harm in that. But always, always see that how deep diving they are doing when it comes to asset allocation or for that matter, any recommendation. Okay, and let's take this last question. Jenner has this question. I hope I uh, pronounced the name right. Okay, please give an example of a long-term goal of 15 years and asset allocation ratio for different risk categories. Okay, you need to come to one finance. Please, you need <laughs> help me on. I mean, I, I doubt, Nitesh, can you answer this in short? Like, it's possible, okay, yeah? So, as, as I told you, we have given that example. If your profile is aggressive, uh, you have a long-term horizon like... Uh, 15 years or of course, based on what is the existing allocation. Yeah. Sometimes what happens that people don't consider when we talk about the tech, we do consider what is your EPF and EPF allocation. Yes. We forget that, yes. right? We yes. think that, okay, that's by default, but you need to consider that and in totality see your net worth yeah. and then allocate to equity. So it can be 70, 30, it can be, as I said, 60 in equity, 20 in that, 10, 10 gold and foreign equity. But again, one, not one size fits <laughs> all. Do 
a proper personalization of that and that will create wonderful use. Super. Okay. So let's just take one last question. Okay. Mr. Manesh is saying, are there any specific sectors or asset classes that you believe are currently under or overemphasized in a typical portfolio? So like the way I said, equity and mutual funds is something that is overemphasized. But is there any other uh, points you want to cover under this question? So yeah, uh, what happens like Sonam mentioned, we normally talk about equity, 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 because of course that gives the highest return in the long term. But to reduce the volatility, think about that and gold. In a very growth oriented period, you might not like, let's say in 21, you might not like the debt. But in 20 to 23, you realize that you need to have that stability or you need that asset class to fill up the bucket of equity when there is an attractive valuation in the equity, right? So don't shy away from adding asset class, of course, based on your knowledge and expertise. And don't shy away from taking profession like why I'm again and again mentioning yes. because this is for the education. Okay. We are not recommending anything here right now, but mostly I think this three to four asset class will take care of uh, any size of a portfolio. Perfect. Okay. Mr. Shivam Sharma is asking, should we invest in a multi-asset diversification mutual fund instead of investing in multiple mutual funds? Interesting, interesting, interesting <laughs> questions. And why I'm saying that there are many uh, dynamic asset allocation funds Absolutely. and there are also a few uh, multi asset allocation fund, right? The benefit here is that, of course, some portion can definitely go to this kind of a fund because that takes care of the asset allocation. Absolutely. They do a monthly or a quarterly rebalance. The another benefit is that when you move out from one asset to another asset, there is a taxation impact also. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So this kind of a fund takes care of that thing also. Okay. So that's an add on. And I would suggest that there can be some allocation to uh, divert, uh, this kind of a multi asset allocation funds also. Okay, let me take this last question. I'm really sorry I'm extending the number we, of we questions. We have to see last yeah, questions. Actually, <laughs> questions. So let me just come to it. Yes, absolutely. So Mr. Vaibhav is asking growth of mutual fund AMC versus life insurance sector. Which one is performing well in the near future? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be true. I can give you some uh, gyan, but honestly speaking, I don't know. But yeah, uh, just a general remark, both are underpenetrated in India. Okay, both are underpenetrated. But at least we can see that, of course, there are a few life insurance which are listed. Yeah. But consider that your mutual fund AUM to uh, 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 mutual fund AUM to GDP is quite less at 18% only. In the same way, I think we are hardly penetrated into insurance. So That's both okay. things uh, are sunrise okay. sector. Uh, am I speaking this right or not? I'm not sure. Life insurance is not something that should be fully considered also of as an investment course, option. Of course, so, when I say life insurance, yes. it's purely term insurance Perfect. at also. Yes. Big no, never mix investment and insurance. Absolutely. Your 50% of the job is sorted, okay? I think 50% <laughs> of personal finance is sorted. Never mix investment and insurance. If it can be anything, traditional insurance, unique and all. Shire from that. <laughs> Thank you so much for clarifying that for us. So this whole session is for education purposes only. No recommendations from here. Please, we need to give this disclaimer. It's extremely important. You see to it that you go for hyper-personalization. Obviously, like already Nitesh said it, you can come to Man Finance where we take care of the holistic financial planning for you. And we see to it that it is a mix of robo advisory as well as hyper personalization through our qualified financial advisors, obviously. All right. So before you go, uh, do not forget to uh, follow us on all our social media uh, handles. Also, Mr. Uh, Nitesh sir, here. And uh, most importantly, do go and visit our website and download the app. Check out the features at One Finance. Before you go, I'd like to thank our whole team. First of all, Nitesh, for joining us today. Uh, our director and producer, Mr. Prakhar Gupta who makes this whole masterclass possible. Our management and operation completely handled by Akash Kotian and Nehal with us. Our PPT and designs have been taken care by Mr. Amul Chavra. He's a designer with us. And leading this whole masterclass and guiding us in the whole process is Manju Dhake. Uh, she's a VP Insurance at Fund Finance. So thank you everyone for making this masterclass so successful. And most importantly, thank you for always being My there God. at One Finance for us. Uh, we'll be back with another masterclass. Do not forget to check out on your LinkedIn very soon. Thank you so much, everyone, and a very good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.